So I have this delicious 22 karat apricot colored gold, um, which is delicious. Um, and it's available on the website. You know, that's my whole life now. You like this? Go get it on the website. I'm like a pusher really, but hopefully you guys don't mind too much. So I'm gonna anneal this. And like we were discussing earlier, this is a case where I would wanna use something like fire coat because when I anneal this and then pickle it, more copper will be removed from the surface and I'll have more like of the pure gold, the yellow at the surface, which, you know, who doesn't like gold? But when you have a colored alloy, you know, like this is a little more like, well, apricot-y, but you know, pink or green or anything, you really don't want to have that surface enrichment happening because you're just gonna have to sand it off if you wanna maintain the color, which is the whole point of doing the fancy alloys. So, this would be a perfect example of, I want to anneal this and I want to mill it a little bit thinner because I'm going to make some uh, Chase and Repose earrings out of it. And I want the color to stay just like it is. So I'm going to use my fire coat. And here it is. And you see, after it sits even for just a few minutes, it'll separate, no big deal. Um, you just, you're always going to have to like swirl the jar around or take your piece and like swish it around in there to stir it up. Ta-da! So, Will this fit in here? Yes, it will, how convenient. Um, you can also, of course, always use a flux brush, but you know, if I can, I like to just, you know, dip it, dip it in there and swirl it around. I'm gonna use my tweezers and I'm gonna, whoop. Gently, because I don't wanna like splash this all over the place, but I'm kind of stirring this around and so I'm just gently swirling the gold around in there because I want all the boric acid that settled to the bottom to kind of, you know, mix back in. I'm gonna take it and just sit it on this little third arm so that hopefully you guys can see a little better. But we've got, you'll see it's wet, you know, and it's got the little um, bits of boric acid on it. Now, I can dry it off with the torch or I can just let it sit for a minute or two because the alcohol um, will evaporate pretty quickly. But before I get my torch going and do anything crazy, I'm gonna put the lid on this because remember, like I said, this is flammable. So you don't wanna like get so caught up in what you're doing that you've got an open jar of flammable stuff uh, sitting right next to your torch because you know, bad things can happen. So I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm actually gonna kind of put it out of the way a little bit. Now, uh, we probably talked about this before. You can either catch it on fire, which will just burn off the alcohol. I mean, it's not gonna like do like a fireball or anything. Um, if you let it evaporate, you will get a little bit of a thicker coat, but um, usually I think either way you have enough. If I end up with a bare patch anywhere, of course, I would just then use my little flux brush to paint it. But usually this covers pretty well, but I'll just, I will show you the pretty green that you get when you light it. So I'm gonna light it up so that you can see what that looks like. Okay, so if you watch, you see that cute little green? And you see it burns off very quickly. Like I said, it's not like it's gonna make a giant fireball or anything. So then what I have now is sort of a nice white coating, which is my fire coat. And that is what's gonna protect the surface from oxygen and keep the whole, you know, the copper getting oxidized and then we'll eventually pickle it off. We keep all that from happening because that's what causes the extra gold to be at the surface, which is something we call um, depletion gilding. I'm sure you've heard that at one point or another.